Good evening. We are just about to get started, so make yourselves comfortable and we will start the presentation in just a couple minutes. Thank you so much for being here. Hello and welcome to the Women's Travel Club 2018 Costa Rica Tour webinar hosted by Kevin and Marianne. Hi everyone, thanks for being here tonight. I'm Kevin Hilbertink. I work for the Women's Travel Club in marketing and creative and I'm also engaged to Marianne Southall, the tour owner, founder and your tour leader. And we now say hello to Marianne. Hello, I'm just uh, sorting out how to work my screen here. Sorry, <laughs> there is Kev and there is myself. I am so glad that everybody has joined us this evening to learn about one of my most favorite places in the world. Um, Costa Rica is just a amazing and wonderful destination. I hope you enjoy the presentation. And I very much hope that you do decide to join us on this wonderful tour. Um, we'll go through a bit uh, first, just about the Women's Travel Club and who we are and what we do and how we do things. And then we will have a nice in-depth look into our amazing tour from November 22nd to December 5th uh, this year. We will be in Costa Rica. Well, thanks again, everyone, for uh, joining us tonight. A little bit of administrative housekeeping. At any time in your dialogue box, you can type in questions and we'll do our best in real time to get answers to them. If not, definitely at the end of the webinar, there'll be an additional opportunity to ask questions. Uh, we'll go over at the end of the presentation how to uh, ask questions where we can unmute your mic and uh, we can actually talk. But for now, let's... Uh, Let's talk to Marianne a little bit about how the Women's Travel Club came to being and a little bit about your background in travel. Okay, so I was in travel for years and um, doing your regular kind of travel, selling all inclusives and selling cruises um, and, the, and that type of thing. My heart was actually more in the touring end of travel. I liked to, uh, see destinations, become immersed in destinations, and really and visit different areas and not just go on a vacation, but really travel. I found uh, through lots of 
uh, marketing uh, type of events that a lot of ladies really wanted to do that type of travel too. A lot of ladies had destinations they wanted to see, they had bucket lists that they wanted to fulfill, but they didn't always have somebody to travel with. And that was a big obstacle for them to why they weren't traveling. They didn't necessarily want to do a big bus tour with 40 other people and they didn't want to go alone. So they were just opting not to, not to do the, the tours and go to the destinations mm -hmm. they wanted to see. Um, so I really started to formulate the Women's Travel Club. And in that, I uh, knew Debbie, we had worked together and um, Debbie was also very interested in the same type of thing. So she has been with me from the start and my right hand in anything and everything to do with the Women's Travel Club. If you've traveled with us, I'm sure you know Debbie quite well. Um, and between us, we have about 45 years in the travel industry. So we certainly have lots of experience uh, knowing travel itself. For myself, I love tours that kind of have to do with nature, anything to do with animals. That's really where my heart lies. So, uh, that's a bit about me and where the, the Women's Travel Club, kind of how it came about. Well, I think you touched on a really good point, um, something very important to the Women's Travel Club, and, and it's up on the screen now, and that is your small group tours. Um, certainly uh, more personal, uh, more flexible. As you said, you're not waiting in huge lines for a bus, uh, a tram. Um, Talk a, a little bit more about why small group tours are so important to the Women's Travel Club. Yes, that, that was very important to me. Um, I want women to feel like they're traveling with a group of friends. So to me, it was important to keep the, the group number limited. All our group sizes are limited to 16 ladies per tour. Some are even smaller, depending on the destination and logistics. But you will really uh, get to know all the ladies well on your tour. And it is a fun, really safe, good way to travel. Now, um, you've decided to specialize in women-only tours. I understand, you know, there are other tour operators um, that offer other tours, co-ed, whatever the case may be. You've decided to specialize in women-only tours. Um, how has that dynamic worked out for you so far? That has worked out very well for us. And we've got um, the feedback from the ladies who travel with us that that is what they want. I know, like you said, there's some women travel organizations that do co-ed tours, um, but we feel that our ladies would really prefer to keep our tours as women only. And um, the, the women only dynamic certainly has a, a real feel to it. it. Is different when you travel with a small group of ladies than when you travel on a co-ed tour. And there are so many co-ed tour companies out there available that it was, you know, more, for us, it just makes more sense to to keep it as women mm -hmm. only for the tours. Well, once you're on these tours, um, now I realize with different destination, there's different opportunities and um, different types of activities available. But what are some of the um, common themes to your activities uh, on your tours ar around the world? And and um, I guess in a related question, what kind of physical activity level would the would the ladies have to uh, have or, or what could they expect as far as physical ex exertion? Um, the tours are for the most part at a fairly relaxed uh, type of pace. Most of the ladies that travel with us are somewhere around retirement age. So you're going to look at um, 60s plus or minus depending on um, just the ladies that happen to book a given tour but that that's pretty mm -hmm. much our demographic and at that demographic we're not doing real adventure travel we're doing more of a relaxed pace on still getting out and having some walking tours and, and doing some active 
activities, but nothing really too strenuous. Um, and if there are, if we're in a destination where you're going to see with Costa Rica, there are definitely adventure activities available and we make those optional. So if you want to try them, that is awesome. And, you know, we're all for that, but you don't feel that you have to, or you have to push yourself right, to something right. that, that you're really not comfortable doing. Um, with a small group, we also have the opportunity to do lots of hands-on activities, which we find is excellent way to make yourself feel immersed in, in a destination. You, you really feel connected when you're actually doing things in that destination and not just looking at it through like a window pane. You're actually part of it. Um, so we do things such as uh, cooking classes, we'll do tastings, um, we'll do different physical activities, or um, a big thing is a lot of times cultural dress, because a lot of areas we go to have very specific cultural dress, and kind of just playing dress up for the day in mm -hmm. that cultural dress can, can really be a fun <laughs> activity. Um, you can see here that we did the geisha yeah. makeover in Japan, and it was actually head to toe. Yeah. We got dressed as geishas, the makeup, the hair, the everything. That picture, sorry, makes me uh, smile and giggle every time I see it. That's that's fantastic. That. It was so much fun. It was just just an amazing day. And they gave us a whole photo shoot with it, so we have tons of pictures from it. All right, well... I know for myself, I'm always very conscious of accommodations. Uh, the other thing too is you're often dealing with a tour of predominantly solo travelers. So um, you have the option both uh, to set up ladies to stay as a single or to match them up with a roommate. Uh, talk a little bit about the type of accommodations you have and the process for matching up women, uh, setting them up with a roommate. How, how does that work? Okay. Most ladies do come to us as solo travelers. Mm -hmm. um, so they uh, a lot of times want to be matched with a roommate. And we get just some basic information from them. So on the booking form, when you book in, there is a list of questions that you can um, go through and it's just, it's not very long. It just asks things like um, sleeping patterns. If you're an early riser, if uh, you're a night owl, if you, um, if you are a light sleeper, if you snore, those type of things. And that helps us match up um, to somebody who's gonna be compatible in that type of way. The roommate matching actually works very well. Most ladies that come to us are of a very similar mindset. They love to travel. They um, want to meet other ladies. They're outgoing, they're friendly. So the roommate matching does work well. And we will introduce you ahead of time so you get to know the other ladies, mm -hmm. uh, your roommate ahead of time and other ladies on the tour too. So, um, it does work very well, but if you decide that you would prefer your own room, that's always an option too. There's uh, often a single supplement, so a little bit higher rate for your own room. And that rate is determined by basically the cost of accommodation in the area we are in and the number of nights of the, the trip. So um, we try and keep it as low as possible, but that kind of comes into play. Uh, for the accommodations, we try and keep it to something um, that is um, specific to the destination. So we try and stay away from too many chain hotels as opposed to maybe something boutique, but also keeping it um, kind of very comfortable, very nice accommodation without being um, too high end and, and just making the tour too expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. All right. Well, I think... Uh... It's time now to introduce and meet the tour leaders and maybe go over uh, the role of a tour leader and what she'll do and, and some of her responsibilities on a tour. Okay, so on every tour, we're going to have a tour leader from the Women's Travel Club who is basically your concierge for the tour. They're there to make sure everything runs smoothly for you while you're on the tour. 
At the same time, you will have a local English speaking tour guide who is the destination expert. That is the person who's going to teach us about the destination, why we're there. Uh, so the tour leaders, um, I can introduce you to um, some of our tour leaders. Debbie, who we touched on earlier, is um, Deb, between Debbie and I, we certainly do a lion's share of the tour. So often, more often than not, we're one of the tour leaders on the on the various tours. Debbie tends to lead a lot of the city tours. Mm -hmm. um, she's love Europe cruises, that kind of tour. You will see Debbie on. Uh, this is Melissa. Melissa probably leads one or two tours a year. Um, she would like to lead more and we'll probably get into leading more, but she still has a day job. Um, <laughs> she's also very adventurous, um, as you can see by the shark yeah, in the that background. Is a shark in the background. <laughs> that is yeah, a I great noticed, white shark in the background. Um, she also jumps out of planes and does crazy stuff. Um, but definitely for us, and she is. Um, not quite so uh oh there i recognize that train i just had to mute debbie <laughs> oh. um so she um keeps it a little bit a little bit calmer for us uh this is irene irene tends to lead kind of urban type tours uh city type tours um that kind of thing again and she probably leads uh two or three tours throughout the year uh, this is Kirsten. Kirsten's day job is actually a veterinarian, um, but she will lead as many tours as she can kind of fit into that during a year. She's a very avid traveler um, and she loves anything nature also, um, but also a lot of Europe too. So she, she's pretty eclectic in her tour tastes. Um, and that, yes, is a gorilla behind her. Yeah, that is a mountain gorilla, right? Yes, that is in Rwanda and a mountain gorilla <laughs> right behind her. Yeah. Um, and this is myself. I tend to, to lead tours that are going to be more nature-based, kind of exotic destinations. Um, Africa is where my heart is. And this is myself leading a tour um in uganda and that is a group of ladies on um atvs going through mud and rain and craziness and i i have to tell you the ladies were a little hesitant mm -hmm. going into this and a little bit like i don't know if i can do this but everybody tried it and it went great and it was one of those things at the end everybody was like that's my favorite part i'm so glad i did yeah. that so don't be afraid to try stuff because sometimes getting out of your shell is awesome. Well, I will point out in future tours, if you could keep both hands on the handlebars, please. <laughs> okay. that, that'd be good. Okay, we've got a uh, pretty self-explanatory big map up. Uh, stars, uh, donate where your, uh, where your tours are for 2019, correct? Yes, these are all our 2019 tours. As you can see, it's a it's a pretty diverse collection of tours um, for destinations. We also try and keep a varied um, number of nights for tours, um, different inclusions, and different levels of activity, so that there there tends to be something for everyone. Um, for the 2019 tours, definitely, if you're looking at 2019, have a look. Some of them are starting to fill up already, so you don't want to miss out on something that might kind of um, be attractive to you. Uh, and if I recall, there is a pre-book option for tours. There is a pre-book option for tours. That comes out usually in the fall when we announce new tours. Uh, we will put them up initially for pre-booking. So that's before all the final details are announced. It's just basically giving you a destination and a month that we're going. If you're interested in let us know, once all the final details are announced, you can decide at that point if you'd like to book it or not. If you do book it, we'll give you $100 off the tour as a thank you for kind of letting us know there was interest there. If you decide not to book it, it doesn't matter. It's not a problem at all. Um, and the tours that will come out for pre-booking will come out uh, this fall for 2020. So it's always kind of a year and a bit ahead. Well, I think, um, and thank you, that was a great overview of the Women's Travel Club and what you do in your 
tour leaders do. But the uh, the main reason we're all here tonight is to talk about your Costa Rica tour. Yes. And it's a country I personally fell in love with in 2006. I had the opportunity to go on a, uh, also I guess a small group tour, 12 people. We had uh, one tour guide uh, and two local tour leaders. And uh, we were able to go across Costa Rica from Pacific to Caribbean, hiking, biking, and rafting. Uh, it's an amazing country. It um, has diverse climate zones, different weather. People are fantastic. Um, but your tour, of course, is going to be a lot different than uh, than mine uh, a few yes. years ago now. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Let's, uh, let's start with a little bit of an overview of uh, Costa Rica. Okay, so our tour again is going November 22nd to December 5th, 2018. So it's going this fall coming up quite quickly. Um, this is Costa Rica, right in the middle of Central America. It's bordered by Nicaragua to the north and Panama to the south. On the one coast is the Caribbean Sea and the other coast is the Pacific Ocean. So we're gonna start the tour as a point of arrival at uh, San Jose, uh, world-class international airport. San Jose uh, is a fairly big city um a very uh very uh, pro business uh city um but with still touches of um spanish colonial architecture uh very much a uh, latin or tikan flavor very vibrant very vibrant city um tell us about how the tour starts in san jose okay so um the first day is a a free day. We don't have any activities planned and that is just because of arrival time. So no matter what time, if you happen to arrive that day, you don't have to worry that you're going to miss anything. We will have a welcome meeting that evening just to get acquainted, get to know each other and uh, go over the next few days activities. If something happened in your flight, came in and you missed that welcome meeting, it's not a problem at all. We will catch you up. Um, if you want to come a day or two early and kind of acclimatize yourself to the area and to the city, that is fine too and very common for the ladies to do. Um, this is actually a great theater right in San Jose and if you do have a free night, I've heard that they have an amazing ballet and you can just show up and, and pick up tickets while you're there. Um, a couple other areas of note if you're in San Jose and want to want to have some time to wander. There's a historic neighborhoods. Um, one is called Barrio Amon, where colonial mansions have been uh, converted into contemporary art galleries. That's kind of a really cool area. And if you're a little bit hungry, the Barrio Escalante is uh, the city's gastronomic epicenter. So that would be absolutely worth trying out for dinner. Um, the next day, we'll leave San Jose, and we're going to make our way to Tortuguero National Park. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll notice um, in Costa Rica, if you have not been there, in Canada or the U.S., we'll say something to the effect of a town is 200 kilometers away, or in the U.S., um, 140 miles. In Costa Rica, they go by time they'll say it is three hours away or it's two hours away. And to be totally honest, those times can be highly variable <laughs> depending on road conditions. So the roads are very good in Costa Rica, um, but things can always happen uh, in Central America. So anyway, the trip gets off to uh, an exciting st start by going north to the Caribbean side and Tortuguero National Park. Yes, which is, according to them, a three hour drive. Um, we will stop for a typical Costa Rican breakfast along the way, so that will break up that drive a little bit. Uh, when we get to Tortuguero, uh, we are going to be very happy. Um, it's a beautiful national park. It's a protected wilderness area right on the coast. Its beaches are famous nesting grounds for sea turtles, including the endangered green turtles. 
uh, the parks, freshwater creeks, and lagoons, which can be navigated by boat or canoe, shelter spectacled caimans, river turtles, the surrounding dense rainforest is also rich with wildlife from monkeys to many bird species. Uh, first, we're going to travel by van, and then we will have to transfer to a boat to get to our secluded lodge, mm -hmm. which is only acceptable accessible by boat. Yeah. Um, and the tropical eco paradise is home to countless birds and animal species that we're going to see even on our way just to the hotel or to the lodge. And um, when we arrive at the lodge, you're going to have the rest of your the day at your leisure. Uh, this is just some pictures of getting into the lodge itself. Our first day, um, we will have an optional guided night boat tour, which I highly suggest. There's so many species, so many things that you will see at night that you're not going to see at any other time. So this is, is a real good option and something I would really suggest to, to take advantage of while you're there. On our second day, we do both a boat tour and a jungle walk. So on the boat tour, we're going to see lots of tropical birds, reptiles, mammals. Um, we can, in the trees, look for toucans, uh, caimans on the shore, otters, iguanas, frogs, and certainly look up in, for monkeys and hopefully some sloths. Remember to bring binoculars and bug spray and be prepared for some hot, humid, and possibly wet weather. Mm -hmm. Uh, during our guided walk around the lodge, we're going to see the flora and fauna, learn a little bit more about the details of the delicate ecosystem, and get some up-close view of the frogs and insects that play an important part in this nature cycle. Uh, we do have a day where we visit the Sea Turtle Conservancy, which is just an amazing addition to this tour. Um, we'll actually meet with one of the Sea Turtle Conservancy researchers and learn all about this nonprofit organization that has actually been instrumental in saving the Caribbean green turtle from extinction. Um, we'll learn about all the four species of sea turtles found in Tortuga Guru and um, discuss the main activities that they do at the Conservancy. Um, and the, also just awareness in general of mm -hmm. sea turtles across the globe. Oh, it's, it, truly, they're amazing, gentle, wonderful creatures uh, to see something that can live so long, such a long lifespan. Oh, it's and if amazing. you see them in person, yeah. how big they are. Yeah. They're yeah. huge. And gentle. <laughs> well, for your clients, I'm really excited about this lodge, uh, Turtle Lodge. Uh, to me, it looks like it just seamlessly integrates with nature and the rainforest. Um, true eco style staying in Costa Rica. Um, talk a little bit about the lodge and, and what your clients can expect. Okay, yes, it is. It's surrounded by lush jungle, a meandering private canal, and half mile of private beach on the Caribbean. I think I could live there. <laughs> Um, rooms are simple, so there's going to be an ensuite, there's electricity, there's hot water, everything you need, but due to the remote location, um, there can sometimes be interruptions in service. And there is no air conditioning, but the rooms have large screened-in screened windows and ceiling fans to catch the breeze off the Caribbean Sea. And it is actually quite comfortable in the evening, so you're not going to miss the air conditioning at all. Um, we will have to leave Tortuguero to, to head to our next uh, destination, though. It's going to be hard to leave there, I think, I my think opinion. So. <laughs> All right, so it looks like you've got uh, a little bit of a trek to get to La Fortuna. Uh, it'll be worth it. Um, I understand, though, there's a stop along the way. There is. We're going to stop at uh, my cafecito coffee cooperative along the way so if you didn't get your morning coffee before we leave don't worry you can you can fill up here um we're gonna see how coffee's grown uh learn about the harvesting the husking drying roasting the beans um and we're also going to have lunch uh, at this location so we're going to have a great lunch of plantains beans and freshly caught tilapia fish and I, I believe there is a Costa Rica conversion scale. One Costa Rican coffee equals about three Tim Hortons coffees. <laughs> okay. So maybe keep that in uh, mind uh, with your with your intake. 
<laughs> um, once in La Fortuna, we're going to stay there for three nights, um, which we mentioned is such a plus on this tour is that every destination is multiple nights. It just, it's a much more comfortable tour that way. Um, and we really get to explore the different areas that we visit. Uh, we stay in a lovely hotel. It's just on the outskirts of town, and it really takes advantage of the natural beauty, stunning landscapes of the area, and we have a great view of Aranol Volcano. Yeah, that's truly one of the marquee destinations in Costa Rica, the uh, Arnel area, uh, Lake Arnel, uh, the volcanoes. It's considered one of the must-see stops in Costa Rica. Ah, on our second day oh, in the area. I think we have an activity uh, lined up we here. We do. We okay. have a hands-on activity. All right. Um, we're going to do a tortilla making class. Um, we're going to make ourselves dinner. You nice. know, you had to make your own dinner <laughs> on the tour. Uh, we're going to learn the art of tortilla making from Donna Marara in her family home. Um, right from grinding the corn, mixing the masa, which is the dough, into balls, flattening into the circles, and then cooking it on a wood-burning stove. Uh, once we've done all this, we get to relax with some fruit juice, get to know the family, hear about the history of tortillas, um, mm -hmm. and afterwards dig into a tasty casado, which is a typical Costa Rican dish, including black beans and plantains, complete with our homemade tortillas. Okay, my dinner now, uh, our dinner after this doesn't sound so appealing. <laughs> all right, well, there's a, a beautiful shot of the volcano, and um, so there are activities now in this area that the um, that the ladies can do, I guess, at their choosing. Yeah, so this area is so full of activities. There's so many different options. And rather than us deciding on a couple options and telling our ladies what they're going mm -hmm. to do, we have left them as optional. Um, that way they can choose which activities, how many activities they want to do. If they're going to be very adventurous, they can try something right. quite adventurous. If they're not so adventurous, they can try something certainly more relaxed. And if you absolutely want to crash and read a book, you can do that. You can do that. You can lie <laughs> by the pool and right. just relax or check out the, the trails right around mm -hmm. um, the lodge that we're staying in. Don't worry. You'll never have to go by yourself. Um, the tour later will go with you if there's something you want to try and nobody else wants to go. But generally, um, ladies kind of get into groups and, and pick different things to try. So let's have a look at some of the, the great activities in this area. And this is just a few. There are many others. Yeah. Um, the hot springs, there's amazing natural hot springs because of the volcanoes in the area. Um, very relaxing, just feels so good. It's a therapeutic spa in nature. Um, the hanging bridges. So if you want to go out for a nice walk, um, the hanging bridges are 16 bridges and they all go through um, kind of the base of where the volcanoes are. You can see lots of wildlife from the from the bridges. Great for pictures. Uh, it's just a lovely, lovely walk. Uh, La Fortuna Waterfall which is quite um, spectacular and, mm -hmm. and fairly well known. It's walking distance from our hotel, so you can um, walk or you could take a taxi or a horse-drawn carriage to, to get to, la to the waterfall. It is 500 steps to go down to the waterfall. Just keep in mind because you have to do those 500 steps back up to get back. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once down there is beautiful, mm -hmm. so serene, um, a lovely area. You can swim in the water. It's a little bit cool, but it is lovely. Um, if you are the more adventurous type, there is um, the canyoning, adventure canyoning, which is rappelling down waterfalls. Um, it is certainly for the more adventurous type, but if you want to give it a try, that'd be excellent. Yeah, I will just say quickly, Mayor, uh, from the time I was in Costa Rica, we definitely did things on more of the adventure scale. Uh, Costa Rica's got a great safety record. Um, great infrastructure for tourism. Um, yeah. it's no different than traveling or doing something of, of that like in North America. Yeah, it is for sure. Um, mountain biking is an option. 
and um, either you can rent a mountain bike and go off on your own, um, or you could um, join one of the tours that they have going on with the mountain bikes. And stand up paddle boarding, which, you know, I've tried stand up paddle boarding and every time I see somebody doing it, it looks so easy. And for, for me, yeah, not so much. I could not stay up at all. So they, this includes a lesson. I think this might be my choice because I really need that lesson. All right, so uh, we uh, say goodbye to that region, as uh, difficult as that may be. And now we make our way uh, westward a little bit more now towards the Pacific and to an area I haven't personally been to in Monteverde in the cloud forest. So I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to hear some details about this, uh, this part of the tour. Uh, the cloud forest area is gorgeous. It is literally where the, you know, mountains meet the sky. Um, it's a little wetter in this area, but that, gives us some beautiful foliage, including uh, lots of wild orchids and definitely ferns, um, lots of animals in this area, um, including things such as um, jaguars. Uh, I know, I lost my place on my thing. So I'm oh, just going to wing it. Uh, <laughs> so there's jaguars and oslets and, yeah. and some of your big, bigger mammals in this area, which for me is very appealing. Yeah, probably um, pretty unlikely to see a jag, but you never know. You they're, never they're, know. They're elusive, to be you know, honest. Be positive. I <laughs> want to be positive on right, this. Right, right. Um, on our second day in this area, oh, so we stay here for... We stay okay. here for, I believe, three days. Yeah, three days in total. In total. And um, our hotel is... Um... Well, I see jacuzzi, so it's, uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's off lovely... to a good start as far as I'm concerned. Yes, two nights in this amazing area. Um, and again, because we're at elevation, the mm -hmm. temperatures are kept quite comfortable in this area. Yeah. So we um, won't have air conditioning, but we won't need it. Um, you might find the rooms here kind of have a damp feel to them. And that is just unavoidable because of um, the dampness in the air, the humidity in the air. Right. Um, we will do a... Uh, a walk in the Santa Elena cloud forest. Um, so it's going to be a great opportunity to see those oversized ferns and orchids. Um, it's about a 12 kilometer or seven mile of trail walk. Um, and on our second day in the area, we're going to men go to go visit the Monte Verde Institute and reforestation project. Uh, the Monte Verde Institute has served as a base for numerous National Geographic funded explorers and researchers studying the famed can canopy of the Monte Verde cloud forest. We're going to enjoy a lecture by one of the researchers outlining the various projects National Geographic has sponsored, including new discoveries, insects and bird studies, and the reforestation of tropical regions. Um, after we get to actually play an active role in this project, we're going to um, visit the National Geographic research plot and we can get our hands dirty by either planting trees to restore habitat, assisting in tree care in the nurseries, or just collecting data to provide information that cool. will aid in the success of the tropical reforestation programs. So uh, another hands-on activity. Yes, another small group hands-on activity. Um, while in this area, we'll have a free day to try um, one of the various different uh, activities that they offer. Uh, these are actually ladies from uh, another Costa Rica tour we did. And they certainly um, stepped out of their shell and got a little adventurous. They did zip lining and river rafting. So um, I'm hoping that our ladies on our next tour will, will try a little bit too. All right, I think now people will 
really feel a uh, difference in temperature and climate as the tour heads south and uh, finally gets tight to the Pacific. Uh, I'm guessing in Monteverde at elevation, it'll be humid, temperatures will be in the 20s. Uh, by the time you get to Manuel Antonio Park, uh, you'll be well into the 30s. So now it's time to uh, bring the swimsuits, the sunscreen, hats, and uh, this is a spectacular national park. We spend three nights in this tropical paradise. On our first full day, we're going to set out to explore Emanuel Antonio National Park. Um, like you said, pack your sunscreen, snack, beach shoes, and prepare for a great day in Costa Rica's smallest, yet no less stunning national park. Yeah, it's beautiful. Emanuel Antonio offers four white sand beaches separated by jagged rock outcrops and tidal pools. Get to swim, snorkel, surf, and sunbathe. And when we're all beached out, we get to head into the shade of the nearby hiking trails to search for sloths, monkeys, and armadillos. We'll climb up onto the lookout to capture views of the pristine Pacific Ocean and the off area's offshore islands. If you are used to the Pacific Ocean being cold, if you're from the uh, United States, the Pacific Northwest, even California a little bit, or certainly uh, Vancouver Island, BC, uh, the Pacific Ocean in this national park is bathtub warm. It's beautiful. Uh, we do have a free day again, and this is a great opportunity to actually do something um, that involves the ocean because we really haven't done that on any of our other um, days here. It's been a lot of jungle type of things. So why not take in a, a dolphin and whale watching cruise or catamaran, catamaran cruise, um, surfing lesson, kayaking tour. There's like tons of options, um, but it'd be a great day to kind of get out on the water. And your tour leader will help you make the arrangements and just make sure that nobody gets left out. Well, sadly, oh, all tours uh, must come, come to an end. Uh, so now from Manuel Antonio Park, uh, it's a drive up back to San Jose and describe what happens at the end of a, a tour. Okay, so we have one uh, last night in San Jose where everybody gets to say goodbye mm -hmm. um, to each other and to this beautiful destination. And the next day, um, ladies will start to fly out. So um, we'll start organizing um, ladies according to flights, get them over to the airport. And a um, couple ladies um, might stay a, a day or two or, or go on to another tour. But other than that, it is time to say goodbye, unfortunately. Okay, so I think we threw a pretty good amount of information at everyone. So let's uh, let's just do a, uh, a review of all the inclusions on this uh, 2018 Costa Rica tour. So you have 13 nights deluxe accommodation. So those are um, those unique lodges and eco lodges that we talked about along the way. Um, private air conditioned transportation, except for the the couple of times that we're actually getting transported by boat. Uh, you will have breakfast each morning. There are three lunches and three dinners included. Uh, we don't include a ton of meals just because the food there, there's a lot of selection, really good prices, not expensive. So it makes more sense to leave it to you to kind of purchase what you want to eat instead of, of prepackaging it and, and including it. Uh, the Tortuguero National Park guided tour, a guided jungle walk, uh, visiting the Sea Turtle Conservancy, the My Cafecito Coffee Cooperative Tour, tortilla making, and the home dinner, the Monte Verde Institute lecture and the reforestation project, guided manual Antonio National Park visit, your arrival transfer, English speaking guide throughout, and your women's travel club tour leader. And, um... You are flexible and there are options for uh, your clients that might want to tack a night on um, on the front end or the back end or both. Yeah, it's very common for ladies, um, especially on the front end, to get there mm -hmm. a, a night or two ahead yeah. of time just to acclimatize and, and to get used to their destination and make sure that they're, re they're ready to go. 
Um, so we can um, add pre and post nights accommodation in. For this tour, we're staying at the, the Radisson in uh, San Jose. And the cost of the pre-night is the, the hotel room's $120 if you want to share that with a roommate. So it would be 60 each. If not, it would be 120. Um, and it can just be added in so it's a seamless kind of kind of um, thing for the next nights of your hotel stays. We can also do if you want a little bit more pre and post tours or extended stays so some ladies in certain destinations um would like to just continue touring adding something else on they've already flown there um take advantage of that and add another tour on or before um if you want to do that we can certainly help with that and look at different options and then uh even let other the other ladies on the tour know so that maybe somebody else would want to join you and you can have some companionship for that. Uh, we will assist booking your flights, uh, no problem at all from whatever your closest airport is. We put up a private Facebook group for all of the groups. So once a group is guaranteed, we set up a private Facebook group, which only the ladies going on the tour can get into. And this is a great opportunity for you to get to know the other ladies on the tour, chat about various things coming up, make some plans. And then when you get home, you can also share photos on the Facebook group. Um, like we mentioned before, roommate matching. So you're coming as a solo traveler. We will match you with a roommate if you wish. And tour notes. Um, those come out usually around final payment time, and it's just a list of everything you need to know about the tour. So um, it can be currency information, the type of electrical outlets, a suggested packing list, um, emergency contact phone numbers, everything that you kind of just need to know going into the tour. Muy bien. Uh, well, now we come up to our... Uh our uh, business part of it. And um, I think the rates are very competitively priced. Yeah, for, for almost two weeks, a well-priced tour. Um, so again, we're looking at November 22nd to December 5th of this year. Um, the double occupancy rate is 28.69 Canadian. Uh, for our US ladies, that's gonna work out to about $2,200 US quite favorable for you right now. A uh, single occupancy is 45.38 Canadian or about $3,500 US. Um, we only have one single occupancy spot left and only a few double occupancy spots left for this tour. So it is filling up. If you are interested, I would definitely suggest booking as soon as possible. Um, it'll fill up and I don't want you to be disappointed because once it's full, we we don't add any extra space on. Um, it's only a $250 deposit to hold your spot, but uh, final payment is coming up next month. Uh, full details of the tour can be found on the website. It's going to be www.womens-travel-club.com. If you go to the tours page, you can just scroll down and find Costa Rica and get right on the page. And of course, if you just want to give us a call, call toll-free 1-844-749-0725. Well, very good. And I have no doubt that at the end of this tour, your ladies will have the uh, spirit of Costa Rica, which is called uh, Pura Vita, <laughs> meaning pure life or simple life. And that is a uh, slogan, uh, a saying, a way of life. Uh, you'll hear that all throughout Costa Rica. Um, if anybody has any questions that they didn't just type in to the chat, um, you can raise your hand. So there's a little hand icon. If you hit that, we'll see it and we can um, unmute your mic and you can ask any questions you may have. But thank you to all for being here tonight and your attention it is very much appreciated. And uh, also for our first webinar, he, uh, it's, uh, it's no fun without an audience. So thank you yes. for your uh, attendance you so much. and your attention tonight. 
I'm going to unmute the, the staff in case they have anything to add, maybe. Oh, Kirsten self-muted. She's gonna have to unmute herself. There we go. There, hi, Marianne and Kevin. Thank you so much for that. That was excellent. Oh, thank you. Well, Thanks, this is, Kirsten. This is Kirsten oh. talking, by the way, for everybody. Yes. Um, we just at the end, day. oh, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, just at the end for me, the last uh, uh, little bit, I the audio was cutting out. I don't know that I necessarily missed any important information because you had it listed on the screen. But um, if anybody else missed the audio, I don't know if it was just my computer or not. It was just this slide, uh, mostly the last slide. Okay. Okay, um, hold on. I'm just gonna go to Renee because she has a question. Okay. Hi, Wonderful. Renee. Hello, and thank you uh, both for a very, very informative uh, webinar. Really, this is my first time even uh, looking into a women's club uh, travel, so a uh, little bit of nerves in the stomach as to what's involved. But uh, tonight's webinar is uh, was very informative. Thank you. Well, thank you. I just, thank you. It was our first webinar, so I had a little bit of nerves in the stomach, too. <laughs> My question was, uh, you mentioned that you've gone to Costa Rica before. Was it at the same time of the year? Because I know that this is towards the end of the rainy season. And knowing you can't predict weather, uh, mm -hmm. how was the weather when uh, you've gone before? Yes. Um, when we went before, it was exactly at the same time. Um, I have been to Costa Rica actually a few times at that time of year, kind of the end of November. Um, and I find it a really good time to go. Um, although you can never absolutely predict um, weather, we're going at the, the very end of November, kind of start of December, which gets into some of their nicest weather. And it also makes everything very lush and green at that time. Um, it is one of my favorite times to go. Um, also being in some areas not quite as hot as it can be, because there are areas that can be very, very hot once you get into kind of January, February. Um, so it is, you, you do, you know, skirt a little bit with the rainy season just going at the end, but I think it's, it's one of my favorite times to go for weather. Thanks for your question, Renee. Uh, it looks like Nancy has a question too. Um, hi, Nancy. And uh, her question was, will this webinar be available to view online? Yes, it will. We will post it up on the website. So if you wanna go back to it at any point, you can go back and play it on the website. So the website being the Women's Travel Club Website? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that women's-travel-club.com, and again, go to tours, go to Costa Rica, and it will be on the Costa Rica page. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, Karen McDonald has her hand up, Marianne, or did have? I beg oh. pardon. Okay. Oh, there. Yes, I Karen McDonald okay. has her hand. Up. Okay. Thank you. Just quick ones. Here. Hi, Karen. Hi, how are you? Very well. I just want to say, too, I am, uh, this is my first time looking into the group as well, and I've booked uh, next year for Italy, and I was just interested in how the um, demonstrations and different bookings were going to go. So tonight was very, very informative. Oh, and any anything that I've uh, had in contact via email, has been very, very organized, and I truly appreciate that. Oh, so it's very, you. very, very professional, and I like the uh, aspect of how you do smaller groups, and there's always someone to assist you with anything, and it's not your basic holiday. When you go on these things, the smaller groups, you don't have to wait in line as much, and you're staying at nice hotels, and like you said, the, the price is right, and it's it looks like it's a wonderful holiday. Oh, thank you so much. We really appreciate your feedback. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Okay, I don't see anyone else um, with any questions or comments. 
Uh, certainly don't uh, hesitate to contact us if you do think of anything. Uh, we are here to answer any questions you might have. Um, really appreciate everybody taking the time out of their evening and joining us. Uh, we're hoping to have more webinars on different tours. So if there is another tour for 2019 that you're interested in, just um, keep an eye out for that webinar to, to come up. Thank you so much, everyone, for your attention. Uh, you made our very first webinar great. And uh, thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Thanks again. Thank you.